All right. So, I think uh, the panel that we have here now is uh, mining behavioral data to delight customers. And uh, Raman just finished a good, insightful presentation, so that set the tone right. Uh, the last uh, panel discussion that we had was pretty interactive, and uh, we will try to continue to keep it interactive. Other important observation for that uh, panel discussion was that there were a lot of controversial views uh, with respect to what is the right way of going mobile and there were diagonally opposite views because it's an evolving technology and uh, there are a lot of experiments that people are doing to get it right or uh, at least they think that they are going in the right direction and then they change course. So I'll bring you another, so data, data mining is another similar field, uh, big data mining where there are a lot of different ways to an end and different people are trying different things and uh, there's a very rich panel out here. Uh, we have people from consulting, we have people from services, we have uh, someone from Raymond, someone from Aditya Birla and someone from Burger King and I am ex-e-commerce so I think it's a very, very good <coughs> mix of panel that you have here so I would uh, encourage you to draw the best from the panel. So just to get started, uh, let us start by what you understand big data is. So I would like to invite views from the audience. Anyone would want to take a dig? What is big data? Any hands? Okay, I'll pick one then. Mr. Uh, Lewis. Sir, would you want to answer what big data is? Anyone? I guess people are not answering because there's no Apple Watch to be awarded. So. I see a hand there. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hi, uh, this is Sanket. Uh, big data is uh, really use of all the information that you as a, uh, say, a reseller or a, say, a issuer of a product or a service would have gathered over a period of time and using such information to engage better, to sell better and probably grow your business more is the use of such information uh, that is available. Interesting. Any other view in terms of what is big data? Hi. I would say big data is all about volume and variety. And when we speak of variety, basically it could be a structured source of data or something unstructured. Perfect. So we have two Vs there. and. Uh, Here's another view. Any data about a customer is big data. Any data. All right, that's an interesting statement. Any data about a customer is big data. I think I saw a hand from here. No? Can I, can I have the microphone? Um, I guess big data is an oxymoron. Uh, any data can be called big data. Uh, it's just that uh, in, for industry, we just needed to define something which was abruptly changing. Um, databases has been uh, catering for only structured data. So when unstructured data came, we wanted to talk about big data. When the volume grew, so that big, biggest of database was not able to cater for it, we called that a big data. So all three Vs, four Vs, five Vs, many definitions are there. But now there are bigger data. So can we call it like biggest data or something? We need to think about that. Okay, that's an uh, interesting view from big data to biggest data. So we've heard structured, unstructured. We've heard volume, variety. We've heard about two Vs, three Vs, four Vs. Uh, essentially, if you really look at the overall responses that we're getting, we don't really, we are not in, really in a position to define what big data is. And what we are talking about is big data mining. So it kind of is a tricky situation to be in. But uh, we'll try to address, uh, clear some you know, air around the whole topic. So. Is this the definition of big data? Anyone? Uh, what is this definition for? This is the definition for volume and velocity is one view. Any other view? What is this definition for? I'll give you a hint. This definition was given by a very leading entity way back in 1958. Give it a shot. You are in a retail technology. We company. have one view here. It may be a raw data. 
raw data uh, raw data no. we have rdbms okay so i think we we'll yeah, give it to is, them yeah this is this is kind of going back this to the is basics actually the information technology definition which was given by hbr now if we move forward what big data is and then siju will probably uh, walk you through different things about big data sure now um, please spare just about a second and a half on that screen right um, you guys remember uh, three idiots definition of a machine uh, you know somehow kind of looks like that right uh, but guys i need more participation hi i heard a hi from across that panel good morning good morning thank you you've been throwing terms at a structured data unstructured data two v's three v's i'll throw one term at you as well zeta byte what's a zeta byte what's a zeta byte what's a zeta byte i don't want the exact definition if you could tell me as to what does it pertain to okay what does it pertain to does it do got to do with grocery does it got to do with size of data does it got to do with uh, the size of the footwear that i wear what is it great start size of data right zeta byte is obviously something which is a factor of a byte or a bit i'll make it easier how many zeros do you think that are there in a zeta byte we are sitting on four zeta bytes of data today and uh, by 2020 it will grow to 11 times the size how many zeros do you think are there in a zeta byte guys throw numbers 15 16 sorry 46 26 quite close at 21 zeros never knew zeros would be so valuable right and uh, if if you're talking of 11 times that amount of data that you'd be straddling with by 2020 uh, the only guys who can help you out are these guys on stage right despite all the talks that's been happening over the past one and a half year uh, one and a half days you know these guys are pretty important um today we live in a semantic economy right uh, i call it a semantic economy i don't call it a digital economy people might throw brick bats at me for that is simply because information flows across barriers information flows from people to people information flows from people to machine machine to machine machine to people you just name the combination right so that's a semantic economy that we live in and uh, like i said big data is any data that you can't possibly analyze and process today to make decisions or in other words if if you have no one else to blame limit on big data right we will briefly touch on this i don't want to get into this boring topic 3 v's we talked about volume variety and velocity there are two more v's getting added you know this is a standard marketing stuff right and you someone will just pick up an alphabet and then put a number before it and then uh, plus to strategy right variability and veracity but what's more important is the fact you need to focus on two things one is the volume of data two the sources of data and three the usefulness of data right once we unveil the report we threw everything onto the Uh, table there right that's what data looks like today right a lot of rubbish the important thing is to make sure that you know we make sense out of it and uh, well, where do you find this animal called big data right you know i belong to a school of thought maybe it's because of my age or the fact that i spent about 19 20 years in this industry iot you think it's a fad it's a new fad what's the earliest form of an iot internet of things what's the earliest form of an iot mobile is one but even before that heard of rfid tags you know procter and gamble walmart that's internet of things it essentially if you are getting information from other than the boundaries of your enterprise right that's kind of assimilating itself into a big load but don't you worry within the walls of the enterprise right like he mentioned there's enough of data for you to really mine so a lot of structured data that's there within the uh, walls of your enterprise that you still haven't looked into and um, 90% of this data is called dark data i know it's a lot of data 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 soon becomes a four letter word 
but stay with us on this because there is something very, very unique that's happening in the world, and that's and we are the reason for that, right? We being at the center of all that is strategic to an enterprise is the result of all this. Now you will find multiple variations of this. Don't go just by the numbers. What it means is that you've got essentially two sources of data, internal data sources, external data sources. Um, as we go along, we will try and articulate as to what do we think big data is, how will it apply to an enterprise, is big data only for the big and the mighty ones, because hey, with big data comes big responsibilities, right? right? And this is just not a cliched sentence because you're talking of customer privacy, you're talking of a host of other things which you're opening up for. RFID tags, Facebook, I don't know how many million people, uh, million people are tweeting. So I forgot to tell you this, right? The, the, um, the primary rule for a session like this is none of your mobiles go on and off mode, right? Please tweet, please get onto Facebook, share, do whatever you want, but pay some attention here as well. Uh, the importance of people, the importance of data sources can't be more articulated than a recent phenomenon which happened in which a large corporation paid $26 billion to achieve another company that we all are a part of. Guess how many people do they get access to now? Sorry? Sorry? No, you see, you're saying something. So it was LinkedIn. How many people on LinkedIn? How much? 40? 40 million multiplied by 10. So 433 million people on LinkedIn today, right? That's more than the population of the United States. In about five or six years' time, it's going to be 1.5 billion, which is now you know where the market is, right? So that's where all the concept of big data is coming up. And we are not talking catchments here. We are talking continents. And that's when the digital economy opens up. Just to make your life easy, I put up a very simple chart. Simple, right? This is a big data landscape for 2016 that a particular entity kind of draws up. These are the possibilities. Looks complex, looks easy. What's it? Easy? I am kind of intimidated by what is up there on the screen. But one person who is not going to agree to that is Vinny. And what he'll probably try to do over the next half an hour, 45 minutes, is try and demystify this whole concept around big data. How do we use it? Can we use it? What's the price for not using it? What's the price for using it? Yeah, this is like completely intimidating for me. A lot of this is a lot of jargon. And there's a lot of development that seems to have happened in the last few years in the world. And uh, expectation is to put all of this to use. So we have, we have some understanding of what big data is and how is it generated, what are the sources, etc. But uh, I would like to throw to the panel now that uh, this appears very complex. And uh, it appears that only large organizations with big pockets can drive such initiatives. So I would want to inv uh, invite views as to what it really is. Uh, to begin with Ramesh. Great. Um, so I think um, it does look complex, right? So let, let's be very honest about it. It does look complex. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, is really because now no matter what we see, what we feel, or what we uh, say is getting captured today somewhere in some of the system. It is there. It is there on your Facebooks, it's on WhatsApp, it's on your mobile phone, it's on your product review websites. Almost anything that you're saying, in fact, what you're feeling right now as I speak, I'm sure it's getting captured somewhere. It's getting captured in the video there. And this data five years back was not analyzed. We didn't have the technology or the computation power or the cost of doing that was so high that we just couldn't leverage that information. Today, because of all that drop in prices on, on the computing and, and the storage is allowing us to analyze each and everything that we say. But from an organization's point of view, our view is that the best way to leverage big data is to start focusing on the outcomes that you want to build on. So I talked about the three levers at the beginning, which is really around the in increase your revenue or improve your productivity or increase your margin. 
what are the four, five, six elements which will get accentuated because of getting new data or new insights because of that. And if you have that end goal in your mind, the chances are that your ability to craft your journey is much simpler than what this chart looks like. So yes, it looks complicated, but if you break that down to the relevance to your organization and what you're trying to do, it's not as complex as it looks like. It's an interesting view. It looks complex, but if you begin with an end in mind and you articulate your problem statement well, then uh, you will have some direction to go to. Uh, I would like to invite views from Kunal. Uh, yes, sir. So uh, I, I'll take the point forward from your own. Um, you know, coming from a retail organization, obviously understanding the data becomes extremely important because you want to drive footfalls uh, into your stores. You want to understand what the customer is buying and what he's not buying. Um, one of the key things that we try to do with the data and analytics uh, is clearly in terms of figuring out what kind of products the customer want, uh, what is his buying cycle, especially when we have a cross-format kind of a store where you've got a Color Plus and a Park Avenue and a person is also going and doing a made-to-measure suit which costs probably a lakh, lakh and a half rupee, you know. Um, so understanding that entire customer experience, his buying habits and all of that, and collating all of that together uh, from different mediums and platform, whether it's a Facebook or a Twitter or a LinkedIn or anything else, becomes extremely important. Uh, and that also helps us in building the growth volumes and the omni-channel strategy around it and things like that. Interesting. So, uh, Kiran, do you think at Burger King, uh, big data initiative is, is there a big data initiative at Burger King to begin with? Uh, yeah. Uh, so to answer your first question, uh, is big data is so complex? Yes, it is too complex, too complex. But uh, just let me tell me uh, tell you about uh, Burger King. Uh, we are just one year old uh, in India, even though we have worldwide presence in India. We are just one year old, and we are competing uh, 10 years, 20 years legacy competitors. So here, for last one year, I'm holding just my transaction data. Not even we don't have a, a luxury of having customer data just like a, a, a Raymond's can do or a Bidla can do or a Reliance can do. Uh, we, we can't collect data from customer at any point. So only, only way of depending on the data which we get it from out of box that is more of unstructured data. So for example, today we, we launch a new product. We just make sure that how people are reacting to it, how people are liking it, and even though we encourage customer to give the feedback at store, uh, most of the uh, feedbacks come from Instagram or a Facebook or some tweets. So big data will play a very important role to us. And we just started using big data analytics for understanding customer taste and his preferences. And we also started using this big data for internal purposes as we will be into a volumes of stores we'll be having so many point of sales as a touch points. So we have a lot of possibilities of fraud at stores. So we need to have a good control on stores. Once we uh, increase the volume of stores, we we'll lose control on stores. So what we are doing is we are having certain tools which will take the logs of pause at the real time and it will throw alerts to the area managers to understand what exactly going at store at the time of transaction, which will be a, which will be more of transactional alerts, which are real time alerts. So that way we will be working on the uh, the control point. And at the customer, obviously uh, it's big S, and we are very much working with uh, the social media data, which is a main source of information for us coming back from customers. It's interesting. So a company which is one year into operations in India. Yeah, I'm just talking and uh, they're launching stores one per week and uh, to keep control uh, over fraud, over uh, stores which are opening at such a rapid pace, uh, big data is being leveraged. Also, they are inviting uh, you know, feedback from social or collecting feedback from social in terms of new products that they're introducing and they have an uphill task given that other players have you know, much foray into the market. So interesting use case uh, for big data leveraging. I'll just add one more point. Uh, 
globally we have other uh, uh, good example of how we are using big data we have initiated in europe and uh, in uh, the american market uh, like uh, have it your way so customer can pick what exactly he want into his sandwiches and by this data we are analyzing what will be our future menu and we are introducing the menu to the market sandeep uh, would you want to come in yeah it looks uh, complex but uh, as many people who are entering into retail or walking into retail say that retail is a complex but it's not it's it's buying and selling so is depending on you how whether you are looking at it very complex or you want to really make it simple so at an organization level if you feel that these are the three area which i is a pain point for me or this is the area which i want to work on let's pick up that three area find out what is relevant to you in this jumble okay and start working i think that's how the journey has to begin interesting uh so siju what do you think are the prerequisites for running a big data initiative at any organization so uh, you know i'll just briefly touch upon a very important thing you said you talked about a journey right and you're talking of simple analytics to cognitive now cognitive is is a point wherein you uh, kind of rely on machines to go through tons and tons and tons of data and then tell you as to what can be accurately predicted uh, i think the prereqs are very simple and correct the whole idea is to first understand where do you want to be right not just because your neighborhood retailer has uh, implemented big data they are getting uh, you know infinite uh, streams of uh, data in terms of how the people are reacting on facebook and so what the whole point is uh, like someone mentioned in a in a panel yesterday uh, customer experience is all about does it hit my bottom line if customer experience doesn't roll down to the bottom line then it's it's just good experience uh, i i don't think any any company today has the uh, flexibility to work that way right so i think the prereq is to make sure that uh, uh, you have your basic systems in place uh, you understand the customer journey uh, so suppose kiran uh, who represents burger king did not know as to how a person who is coming to eat a burger in a store uh, is going to act throughout the day or let's say through the week or through the through the year or through the month uh, and he doesn't know the touch points that burger king as a brand has with you as a customer then all is lost it doesn't matter whether whether he puts in a you know a couple of or a few million dollars into into a big uh, big data project uh, i think it's very important to make sure that the data that is already in silos in your organization i'm sure they are uh, are bought on to uh, you know at least a highest common factor from wherein you can actually look into data that is real and that's where the veracity of it comes in wherein uh, if you it's very simple right you put garbage in you'll get garbage out uh just to avoid that i think it's very important for you to maintain uh, that the other part of it is is your organization ready do you have resources in the organization who are going to look at this as a critical strategic initiative and not just another it project if it goes as an I another it project it'll it'll have the same fate as what crm had about 15 years back right so blame it on crm i think these are the two uh, important ones that i can fathom right now so uh, given that uh, you interact with a lot of customers to help them uh, get their uh, big data initiatives going what do you think uh, could be more prerequisites for uh, running a big data initiative so i think um, so just to build on what you just has said right um, one of the things that we have learned very early on is that there is no single journey for a, uh, which can be applied for all the customers so most of the retailers have different journeys in fact you already seen a difference here where Uh, burger king is just trying to get more about for him the big data is more about unstructured information whereas you got ravens and and you got billers here which are focusing on even getting exist value from your structured data itself so that's a mammoth to the information which is already lying with them so i think a there is no single process or a single sort of uh, mantra for big data adoption uh, second uh, rich talked about the fact that a it, it you need to have a destination in mind uh do you want to do a big bang approach do you want to do a uh, one uh, poc driven kind of approach so you target one area get some success then move to the second one so that strategy needs to be in there uh but one of the thing and again rich you talked about that is is really about is it a it issue or is it a business issue and getting that balance right is my view is the most critical 
factor for success. Most of the da big data journeys which have failed have failed purely because they have treated this as a one department journey. And it has invariably failed. And I'm talking about invariably, I'm talking about 100% of them. And people who have sort of combined their resources, which is basically your business team, whether it's a merchandising team or your marketing, customer marketing team, or uh, your chief supply chain officer, if they have not, they're not working with the IT team, which is fundamental to this, the chances of their success is absolutely nil. So that's the, uh, the second piece of it. Um, the third piece of it is, is really around the skills, right? So a lot of the times all of us have grown in, in let's say, a non-big data environment, whether it's about data management, whether it's about insight generation, whether it's about uh, analyst consumption. So how do we get those skills? And especially if you are taking a step-by-step -step journey, should we work with somebody who is an expert in that uh, to show us the value or should we not? So that's the, the third element is really about how do you create those partnerships which will sort of try and make sure that you are more successful than uh, failure. Interesting. So uh, just to summarize what we're saying is that uh, unless you have a goal in mind, obviously any project uh, would not see success. Uh, but given that there are endless possibilities uh, when you're talking big data, it is very important to you know, uh, kind of trickle down to a sane problem statement so that you can attack that problem statement. That being one point, what we are also saying is that it's not a technology project. So you cannot leave it to an IT department or a technology department for your company to run a big data initiative. It is a, it is a cross-functional project and it needs to be lacked by the leadership, uh, backed by the leadership. My bad. And lastly, uh, we're saying that you need the right skills. Well, if you don't have them on board, then you need to get consultants on board or get external help. But unless you have the right skills to run such an initiative, uh, you are not going to see the light of the day. So Kunal, uh, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, when, when you went for the big data initiative at Raymond, what are the challenges uh, you saw uh, in terms of gearing up or preparing the base, base ground? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of data, a lot of unstructured data, a lot of data which was available in the system. Nobody knew what to do with the data. Uh, when we started discussing omni-channel and think, you know, these big terms that we typically end up using in every retail organization, the question is how are we going to run all of this, right? Uh, the first thing we realized is that we were running multiple loyalty programs in our stores. So every format was running its own loyalty program and uh, nobody knew where the customer is going and what is he doing. Um, we set up a different set, completely separate cell now in the business, which is a chief uh, digital office cell, which is there, where the CRM, the e-commerce, all of that runs through that single cell. Um, and we had a single person who's now responsible for taking care of all these initiatives internally. Uh, we got industry experts who sat and did workshops with us to understand what do we need to do, what does a Raymond customer look like, uh, what are the genres and what all does he want to buy and how does he want to buy things. Uh, and then we started our journey. So the first thing we did is we've implemented a completely new CRM module, uh, loyalty program, which is across all formats. Uh, we consolidated all our loyalty data now, which tells us exactly what the customer has been buying from us over the years now. So, uh, so that has been the starting point for us to really understand our customers better uh, in, a, in a much better fashion. We're now getting into the other part where we're consolidating our e-commerce business. Uh, with with trying to put up a strategy around the Facebooks and the Twitters and trying to map that to the existing customers and see how does all of that work. And then what's the right promotion uh, that works, you know, selling across a 500 rupee voucher to every customer is not going to help that customer come into your store because he probably doesn't want to buy that, right? Uh, so uh, getting into personalized promotions and things like that to, uh, to make sure that the right customer gets the right promotion. Uh, and even if it's not a promotion, you, you know, you're starting a new season, right? Every, every, every six months we have a new season coming up in a store. Uh, the customer wants to know what is that, you know, your preview sales and things like that. So, so that's where we're trying to get in, where uh, we expect understanding the customer better, giving a better experience to the customer, and then taking it forward from there on as a journey. Uh, very well said. So, uh, 
when, when we say, so when, when you hear Kunal speak, there is a lot of customer that is coming to the picture. Uh, generally with big data projects, you have so much of data at hand and so much of possibilities that you tend to lose sight of the customer that what is it that the customer actually wants and how, do you, how, how, how is it that you want to delight the customer. So it is very, very important to keep that problem statement in mind while you are approaching your big data initiative. So, uh, so uh, Vinit, yeah. I'll sl sl slightly interject here, you can call me old fashioned if you may, but customer, focus on customer is fine. But I think, um, you know, the one big problem that's plaguing a lot of retailers today, especially when they're planning to go omnichannel is, that inability to have one view of their product data, right? I can, I can bet that very, very, very few retailers today have a single view of product data across channels. So, you know, customer experience is crucial. Um, please don't get me wrong. Yeah. Customer experience is paramount. I'm a customer, right? It's paramount, but at the same time, I think what goes hand in hand is also the fact that there is some amount of rationalization that you need to have in terms of quality of product data. And, uh, and then, you know, get on to the basics. So that's where I talked about the highest common factor saying, let's get things to a level where, you know, both from a product and the consumer side uh, have data that is uh, workable. Right. So you're absolutely right, Siju. So that's where I'm trying to come from is when once you start understanding the purchase history and all of that, you also try to understand what products work and what doesn't work yeah, right. in your stores. And that also defines in terms of what should be your new lines, uh, you know, what are the things that the customers are liking and not liking. I mean, I may feel that this particular white shirt works great in my store. Uh, the fact is the customer does, wants a separate kind of a collar and a separate kind of a right. coupling around it. So, uh, so that's the other part of the process that we are working on in terms of understanding what are the product lines that we need to do depending on the customer types that we have. Sure. So, uh, Sandeep, what are the top areas that you're looking to target uh, to give, you know, introduce customer delight using big data at Pantry? So, uh, Maybe I'll, I'll share a few more things. So what we see is in Pantaloon uh, as a three, if I see it is not a three pillar, it's a three pillar for uh, us. One is merchandising, second is, is a marketing or customer connect, and third is an operations. So these are the three pillars on which say, if you say pillar, it's run the meeting. So what we are focusing on is to an insight driven Market, inside driven merchandising, inside driven marketing, and inside driven uh, operations. Whether it is supply chain operation, it's a retail operation, or it could be an IT operations. So these are the three areas which we, we see it at this way. Now customer may have an impact on all three in merchandising in terms of what is selling, what are the loyalty customers are buying, what uh, customers are saying, and you design a product or design a pricing promotion, what should go where, you can do it through inside driven marketing, uh, merchandising, marketing what people are saying about you on, in the store in terms of what they're buying or the customer feedback or they are saying on a social or other platform. And an operation as we are sitting on a huge data mine. So any organization even if I say that we being a very old, Pantaloon being a 17-year-old organization, we are sitting in a huge data mine. Now, if you can start digging into that, it's really going to give us a huge uh, information. And, and just on customer to share, and we started capturing and feedback about our customer in a couple of stores. And we have uh, detailed customer feedback, about 2 lakh customer feedbacks. Uh, each individual customer talking about what they like, what they don't like. Now it's a huge gold mine. I'm saying if you are able to analyze that and action on then I think you have uh, on the case. So that's how we, we are looking at it. So basically it's, it's more fundamentals of business. Yeah. Generally business fundamentals, you have yeah. marketing, you have uh, operations and yeah, you have yeah, sales yeah. and you are looking to draw yeah. more insights using big data. So that covers the customer center. So to answer your question is yes, we have sales data, we have transaction data, what loyal customers are buying, that data, what these customers are saying, specific customer who is buying X and what is the feedback, what people are not buying and giving a feedback. 
okay. okay. And uh, mix with the, uh, the customer journey and all. So that creates a big one. But we not only focus on a customer, I think this, if any organization focus on these three area, that would be where you can uh, get the benefit of uh, data analytics. I mean, if you can just add on to what uh, Suresh just mentioned. See, I don't think you should need, you need to put customer as a standalone focus area, right? So I think customer is the destination that we are our tribe. So all the three pillars that you talked about, whether it's merchandising, whether it's marketing, whether it's operation, uh, the thinking is how do I put myself in customer's shoes and take inside decisions for each one of them? So which categories to store so that more customers come? What SKUs should I go wider, should I go broader? What should be the price point? Where do I get price leadership in which category? What promotions to run? Each one of them, similarly on our supply chain. So I don't think customer is sort of separated from these three elements. I think it's pretty much the center of it. And that's where the entire big data, you know, trying to learn from his digital world, from his uh, physical world, from his behavior data comes into play. Right. So, Kiran, if you were to you know, maybe give an example of a product which you did not introduce in India because there was some feedback which you collected and churned through big data. Uh, let me answer in another way. Before we enter into India market, there was a lot of study done because uh, Burger King internationally is famous for beef burgers and it's full of non-vegetarian uh, food. But introducing a vegetarian sandwich to India is a big challenge because big, uh, Burger King is not of a vegetarian product. They never know what is that product at all. And maintaining the brand value and getting a sandwich which uh, Indian customers will accept is a big challenge to us. So there is a lot of uh, analytics we worked out and finally we, we successfully bought some uh, vegetable, uh, vegetarian sandwiches to India which was accepted by people. And the next challenge is, is it accepted or not? We should get a quick feedback. We can't wait for a long time. And we have a very less reach in, uh, in terms of uh, restaurants we opened. So it's very interesting for us to uh, depend on a lot of uh, digital data where we took a right feedbacks from the customers and then we have fine-tuned our products. So Kunal, do you have uh, any use case where you're using uh, big data analytics to maybe plan where your next store should come up? Yeah, so uh, that, that's one of the key things that we do in terms of site research, etc. Um, there, there's a lot of work which goes on uh, on the back front in terms of deciding what sites to open up at. Uh, you know, you use Google, you use MapMyInfo and things like that to understand um, locations where sites are available, what's the population, what's the income uh, around those areas, uh, what are the buying habits of those areas, um, and who are the competitors in those areas, right? So depending on all these information that's available is only when we decide on what sites to open and where to open. Uh, a lot of times you also need to take a decision whether you want to open a standalone store or you want to open in a mall. Um, and at the same time, we have uh, our own stores and we've got uh, franchisee models also. And then you've got shop and shops and, you know, the large scale uh, stores which is there. So it's, it's a mix of all of that and uh, this kind of a data becomes extremely important for us to take a call in terms of how many stores and where to open it. So uh, it's a very, very interesting uh, point of view. Yeah. Raman, do you have... Uh, just, uh, sorry. just want to add, uh, see, one of the observation what we had is uh, though Pantone has been fast growing, but still we, we are not available in each of in geography. So one way to understand where should I open a store, uh, we are present in our marketplace. Okay, and, we un and when we analyze the data, we come to know that this is the place or it's a B town, where there is a lot of demand for Pantone products. Okay, now that's where I am not present even for the 100 kilometer. So well, let's, so let's go and, and, and put it, that's, that's the use of the data where we are selling on other platform. So right here we have two examples of reaching the same uh, end goal. If you want to open the next door, uh, there's one way that you go, you know, uh, help, uh, take help from Google, from Map My India, uh, you get into demographic information, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. What's the, you know, spend capability of that particular area, that particular city and then you finalize a store location. Is another way that you just put up the products on the marketplace and just look at the demand which areas the customers are demanding these products from and uh, probably plan a store in that area. 
so different ways to reach the same goal uh, using uh, uh, data and analytics. So Raman you have seen a lot of uh, customers implement big data uh, can, can you share some examples of where a big data initiative completely went wrong without obviously naming the company. <laughs> there are so many of them. Uh, no I think when I say wrong it is not so much wrong from a fact that they, they, um, they have uh, completely sort of failures but I think the wrong is largely that they are still on a journey and they haven't got the results that they were hoping that they were looking to. And um, so if you look at it one of the reasons primarily was the three imperatives that we talked about in the morning no, no, no. that A whose responsibility it is for, for driving big data agenda. B, do you have the right partnership? So, if you look at today's world, and, and I think it's, it's going to even go even more aggressive, uh, it, it is really about creating a platform for your customers to come on board so that you learn more and more. Loyalty card is one option, Facebook and digital channels is another one. Do you have any eco partners that you can bring in? So, I gave an example of consumer finance companies. Can we have those tie ups? So, if you look at even today, a lot of telcos have applied for uh, payment banks. The reason they have done that is not that they are going to make money out of payments bank, but it will give them the one extra layer of customer information which they didn't have. And with that information, their ability to get inside the sort of head and the heart of the customer is going to be far bigger than what they are doing today. Now, um, so I, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be proper for me to talk about specific failures, but typically the failures have come about a. Um, they don't have the right partner. So they're struggling to sort of build that skill and, um, and, and imagine there are multiple skills. It's not just one dimensional skill. So it's not about just data. It's also about your ability to generate insight from the data. And then of course more importantly the people who actually take decisions are they taking decisions on those, those, uh, based on those insights. So that's the third dimension of the skills. Uh, very often that third dimension is completely forgotten. And, and you can call it change management, you can call it business enablement, but that's where a lot of uh, things slip through the cracks. Uh, we've also seen failures from um, an area where people have basically tried to go very fast. So they, they believe that big, uh, big data is, is the next paradigm and hence I need to get onto this bandwagon very quickly. And, and they've sort of taken a big bang approach or they've taken an approach without actually thinking through what the end outcomes are going to be. So those are the other areas that sort of uh, uh, areas where people have uh, you know not got the success that they're looking for. So Siju one question for you before we take one question from audience uh, I think we are out of time. Uh, being at IBM uh, you help customers uh, implement big data initiatives. Right. Uh, is there any use case for uh, you know using big data for improving the working of IBM itself internal use case? We do. Um, so you must have heard of Watson right which is our basis for cognitive uh, uh, analysis. So uh, we've run a project within the company we have about 450,000 of us merry folks across the world and uh, we uh, ran a competition in terms of uh, what could be commercially viable use cases for Watson and this cuts across industries because uh, big data makes a lot of sense in the healthcare industry and the banking and finance industries as well. So we've, uh, there's a lot of data that we churned, there's a lot of data that we leverage from uh, across the borders, from the Facebook post, from the LinkedIn post, so there was a lot of promotions going on, self promotions of the projects going on. All that was calibrated and taken into account and factored in while deciding on the top five. So uh, I, I, I think we, we had no option, 450,000 of us I guess you know you need to put in some amount of uh, machine muscle behind it. Interesting. So uh, do we have any questions from the audience? We have scope for two. So we heard a lot about big data. So what do we do uh, with the existing data? This is obviously there with a big data is yes, good story. What do we do with the existing data? Some thoughts on that. Can I take that? Uh, yeah, my, my I know my bosses are not here because it's going to hit revenues month on month. Uh, what I would suggest to do is please clean up your existing data. There's a lot of bad data across organizations. We've just recently concluded a very uh, unglamorous project called master data management. 
Well, it's only a matter of time before everyone realizes that master data management is at the core of how you're going to survive. When we did that project, when we did that initiative with this particular uh, large retailer, whom I can't name right now, we realized that they had seven sources of customer data, something very similar to what you have. And that's the reason why I understand they have a chief digital officer who's come on board and who's trying to, and she's trying to run the in the whole process in terms of cleansing data. So I think the first step is in cleansing data. And there's a lot that you can do with the internal structural data. You're not going to die if you don't use big data tomorrow or the day after. Definitely not. I hope it stays within the four walls of the room. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hi, Do we have guys. any more questions? There's a question here. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tarun, and the question is basically to the panel. Now, I'm sure quite a few of you would have remembered that Early 90s saw the advent of computer technology. And then all organizations were trying to figure out how they're going to use the computer. By late 90s and early 2000s, everybody was trying to put an ERP in place. So some had adopted a JD Edwards, some had adopted something else. And then there was a new wave. Barn came, went. Thankfully, we have got SAP and Oracle, which are left. Uh, some of the people I recognize over here were still there. Some of you are slightly newer faces. Then we had the e-commerce thing happening. Then everybody said, what do we do now? And there was websites to be built and stuff like that. A few years later, mid-2009, 2010, there was a CRM phenomenon. Oh god, there's another one that's coming. So ERP came, went, stabilized, and CRM came, now it's stabilized. And hi, we've got this new thing called big data. Fair enough, we've got huge challenges large data sizes. And there was a time when we thought that we are going to reduce our telecom spends because data is shrinking and use of ERP and everything is shrinking. They're going to be using web technologies. And here we have this huge multimedia thing that's hitting us on our face. But then, so has complexity. So has the need of computing. So has still, everything is improved, including the intellect of people managing and handling all of this. So what's, what's really the big complex thing that we're trying to address is just another wave of technology versus business that everybody's got to address. And I particularly appreciate what Sandeep said. It's a journey. It will happen. You will handle it. You will manage it. I mean, uh, sir, could we get to the question, please? Yeah. So Thanks. what is the what's what's the one or two big differentiators this time around? Or are you asking what's so big about big data? Yeah. What's big about big data? I would like to add some more for this. I think it needs. Uh, analytics is not new to retail. Over the years, retailers are doing and be getting benefited by doing some sort of analytics over structured data. So now, uh, the main focus is on unstructured data and semi-structured data, which is not in our pockets. It is there lying somewhere else. So this big data will throw a good insight on that data, which can probably help you in making proactive decisions than waiting for disasters. Th that's, uh, that's I see in how and, big data uh, can be used. I, I understand where you're coming from, and there's a video coming up which will probably support your point of view. Yeah. And before that, it, it just big data has always been there, right? It's, it's just that you, you mentioned it yourself, right? As complexity increases, you tend to adapt, right? You throw more machine power into it. And then comes a time when you can't throw any more machine power, right? Then you outsource that machine power to someone else. Then you suddenly realize there are, hey, there are factors other than the internal factors, right? Today, there are retailers who, uh, on the basis of weather data, predict what the merchandise should be for the next 30 days. It's being done today. Right? Whether you want to do it or not, it's part of the journey. That's why I strongly kind of reinforced what uh, Sandeep said. It's a journey. You can't reach there. You can't look at weather data, predict whether I need to open the store or not when you don't have the basic merchandise in place. So if I could just sort of add before we get into the video. So I, I understand where you're coming from. And to be very honest, some of us are guilty in, in sort of creating this hype around, around big data. Let, let's, let's be very honest. Um, but if you look at some of the, the uh, results which people are starting to generate, we believe that it's actually under-hyped. And the reason for that is very simple. 
if you look at retailing and i'm taking largely global example not so much india is the competitive advantage came largely from getting your supply chain efficiencies right? walmart became walmart because he had the supply chain system which was the best in the world nobody could compete with that and when it got commoditized when everybody put in rp everybody put in crm everybody put in something jd edwards that competitive advantage got diminished and the second wave of leadership came from your purchasing power so because certain retailers were so global they they, they could source the product at half the price and they could they yeah, pass on that price to the customer if you look at the digital world that's not going to work that's not going to work because today the customers are expecting something from you and if you don't provide they will shift out of your ecosystem and this has happened even in india not so much in telco but you are seeing that in uh, not not so much in retail but if you seeing that in telco and banking now there are bank who are just doing digital banking you got the largest bank private psu bank spending 100 million dollars in the next 3 years to become a digital bank and the purpose of that is is again to get to understand their customer better give them the personalized experiences so in 5 years the only way to compete in this market is understanding your customers and giving them personal experiences and the only way it will happen is if you do big data at some form or the other and on that note i will just play a video to end the session thank you for being a patient audience play this no i'll play it so big data can't help here Small okay, guys. Answer. Today we are going to talk about what is the big data. Wait a second. I'm just a little hungry. Hello. John, not pizza. How can I help? Yeah, may I have? Excuse me, sir. Mm. May I have your membership numbers? It's one six eight four six one four four six. All right. Good evening, Mr. Sun. I only live in Eleventh Grammar Road. Yes, and the uh, new mobile phone number is oh seven eight eight nine three four five six seven four. The home phone number is oh seven six five four three two one nine zero. How do you know all my phone numbers? Sir, our computer are connected with C R M C. Okay, may I have a seafood pizza? Seafood pizza is not good for you. What? According to your medical records, you have a high blood pressure. So, what's your recommendation? Well, you can try low fat healthy pizza. How do you know I like this? Last week, you bought a low fat healthy recipe from National Library. Right. I want a Large size of it. How much is it? Ten pounds, please. It's enough for you and your family. But your wife should eat less. She just had an operation last month. Can I pay by card? I'm afraid you can't, Mr. Sun. Your credit card is mixed out. Actually, you still own four hundred and eighty pounds for Barclays. Whatever. Just send it to my house. I have some cash. And how long will it take? About thirty minutes. If you cannot wait, you can drive to here and take it. What? Our CRM's vehicle automatic tracking system shows that your car is still parking on Postwood Road and just got a ticket. Oh my! Hello, sir. Are you still there? I think I need to apologize. The video is a little patchy. That it's got it is a big data. Uh, but essentially, what it is trying to say is that there's a executive who's taking an uh, order for a pizza, and he knows pretty much everything about the customer in terms of what he did last week, uh, what uh, medical problems is he having, whether his car is getting a parking ticket, and all of that. Right. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you very.